It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. And welcome to the DJ Roundtable. Hey, it's me, buddy, again. Always here, always having fun. And, of course, I'm surrounded by some great DJs here. And we have a guest DJ here. Uh, everyone give a big round of applause to Jeff Johnson here. We're coming in tonight. Yeah. All from beautiful South Carolina there. And, um, Jeff, you want to talk a little bit about your... You want to talk a little bit about your uh, DJ service and uh, what you do? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, basically, um, I have a DJ service in Greensboro, North Carolina. I um, I, I DJ anywhere around the state, anywhere from Raleigh to um, Charlotte. Um, I, uh, I don't do as many weddings as I do uh, just local events. Uh, I have another full-time job, so I don't want to be uh, working – uh, I guess every weekend, uh, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, so I take, I, I pick my gigs as uh, you know, as I can get them. But um, I'm not out there advertising to do a whole lot either. So uh, it's for me, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and I've done it for uh, yeah, gosh, since college, long time. Good, good. And what do you have especially where you work at for for uh, events? Is there a sweet spot for you? I do a lot of um, the schools in my area. I give a discount to them, and I do a lot of work with uh, local schools, um, doing proms, uh, dances, uh, you know, just any kind of events that they may have. Um, that's uh, that tends to be my bread and butter. Uh, I do some other uh, activities, you know, some local. Um, I guess they're the uh, sports venues, sports teams, that type of thing. They get together every once in a while. Just this past weekend, they had a, a gala. It's a fundraising event and uh, DJed that. So those are those are kind of the, the bread and butter of what I do. Uh, occasionally, I'll do a wedding. I'll do a few weddings a year, not as many um, as a lot of you guys. But uh, yeah, it's it's about about half and half, probably. Yeah, it, 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 it's interesting how, you know, not only the market and how every DJ is different, and that's one of the reasons, uh, again, if you guys are tuning in here on Twitch or if you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. A lot of you guys are not subscribing. You're watching but not subscribing to the channel. And then the other part, make sure you go to these guys' YouTube channels and watch their stuff. Jeff has a lot of great information. A uh, Hunter, DJ Cool Thing, Cool Thing Entertainment is great stuff. DJ Bradley. Uh, Funky Town Entertainment, you know, with Braylon, uh, DJ Salsa's Matt. We all have great information out there, great stuff. You can see some gig logs and stuff. Um, I have a few unboxings here on my channel. But it's it's one of the things that um, we all are on here in this platform. We, we're all here to share stuff, and we're here to help you guys out, hopefully, and don't fall in the same pitfalls we run into and run into the same problems. But we all do things differently, which is interesting. And that's why I like having all these different DJs coming on here and, you know, tell them their two cents on things that we see. And, and uh, Matt is working on uh, painting a uh, subwoofer. He's trying out some DJ painting. We will hit. Literally paste. <laughs> we will hear his report in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he paints with his paste. And, uh, Jeff, before we go to the first subject, how did you start out with DJ? How did you get into it? Well, uh, gosh, it started in college. I had uh, homemade speakers. I was just into electronics. Um, I had two uh, cassette decks and a uh, Radio Shack mixer, which I'm sure all of us have either used at one point in our life or have seen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it started with uh, the local fraternity that a couple of guys lived on my hall. They said, hey, we need a DJ. Can you uh, DJ a party for us? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I can... Uh, I can spin some tunes for you, even though it's uh, all on cassette tape. <laughs> and uh, so that's how I started out and uh, took a break for, for a while, uh, got back into it, you know, about um, 15, 20 years ago. And, uh, and it had been evolving quite a bit since then. But yeah, it, it started with the bare, the bare minimum, the bare basics. And um, yeah, it's just grown from there. It is interesting when you hear DJs where they started, especially they start early. Uh, with stuff, and especially uh, Brettley's uh, assistant behind him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, she's, yeah. she's lucky she's still starting with the digital uh, age. She's not doing vinyl and carrying albums or cassette tapes 
and dealing with a uh, Radio Shack Tanny uh, <laughs> uh, beautiful uh, uh, mixers that they had. And again, they, they were robust. I still have, actually, I have here, one of second. Yeah, I still have my childhood CDs from when I was a child, and I still, you know, play those from time to time. <laughs> this is a Radio Shack. And I'll hold uh, uh, Radio Shack. This is a microphone mixer, quarter inch plugs, nine volt battery, <laughs> RCA out. This still works. And I have this as a kind of, uh, you could say, a, a buddy's over here like, I used this last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like a museum piece. This, this stuff is retired for a long time, but I still have Radio Shack gear. So it, it's one of the things that, uh, Radio Shack, they had good stuff. It was built well. Um, I can't complain. So, with that Quick said, update. we're going to go to the first subject uh, tonight. Quick update. Oh, Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> Perfect match. There you go. When it dries, that's even better. <laughs> so, right. Sorry. here is the first question tonight. I uh, sent you guys a question that came in. From one of uh, our watchers on YouTube. And I'm going to pull up really quick so I get the wording correctly on it. Um, this is, uh, he, he always has a question for us. And I love this. And, and thank you so much for the questions. I appreciate it. And our panel does appreciate the questions as well. Uh, I have a topic for your next round table. Tip jars. I don't like putting tip jars out for my big events, weddings, kitchenaires, or sweet 16s. Sometimes the clients at those events tell me to put a tip jar out. I always tell them, you pay me to entertain you and your guests. I just don't feel right to have a tip jar out. What are your thoughts? So, Jeff, because of the fact that you deal with a lot of non-wedding stuff, you get a few weddings, uh, and you do at school events, what do you feel about tip jars? Are they a place in your repertoire or are they not? They're not. <laughs> simple, simple answer. No, I've never used a tip jar. I don't anticipate uh, ever using a tip jar. Uh, nothing wrong with it in certain professions. I just don't see someone who's getting paid, um, you know, decent wages. You know, yeah, it's not, it, I'm bringing in a lot of equipment, but but I'm getting paid for it. Uh, that, that's, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to tip, you know, I, I don't, uh, it's not that I don't deserve it or now, now I do get tips occasionally, you know, we all do occasionally somebody will throw in an extra, you know, a few bucks, whatever here and there. And that's great. And I, I thank them if I see it before I leave, but as far as putting a tip jar out, I, I just don't, I just don't uh, see myself ever doing that. Okay. So cool thing. You just had a great little event at a hot dog restaurant by you, uh, a reopening, a grand reopening after they were closed down because of hurricane damage. And uh, first thing first, did you have a hot dog? And if so, what was on your hot dog? Um, well, I had a six inch, uh, I had a regular hot dog, just plain, and it was so good. I, and I kept drinking water and soda from time to time to keep myself hydrated during the gig. No toppings. Yeah, it, 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 it was a nine-hour event. No, no toppings on the hot dog. You just had plain. Yeah, no, oh, no toppings. Now, now, Brentley and I, being both Chicagoans, you know, we have to have our toppings. Now, I am not an onion fan. I do not have onion on my hot dogs. Um, but I do like the green relish. I do like mustard. I do mm -hmm. like the dill pickle. I'm not a sports pepper fan. I'm not a tomato fan. Just not, but I do do Cardelson. I do put ketchup in my hot dog. I like it on there. But wait, 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 wait. Brats uh, or hot dogs? Yeah, I like hot my dogs. No, yeah, I like hot dogs. What about no brats? No, no. That's Wisconsin. That's north. That's up here. That's where we're at. He's he's in Wisconsin. He's in the he's beyond the Cheddar Curtain. So, um, oh, yeah. I mean, I do like I'm my still toppings. No, yeah. It, it's a, yeah. no, that's that's not us. Yeah, I do like my toppings, but I didn't want to get anything on my DJ gear, so I just had it playing. I didn't want to get anything. Understandable. So, tip jars. What's your thought of it, sir? Well, I did get tips at um, this restaurant because people came up to me giving me tips, and I didn't have a tip jar. I just put my tips in my pocket. And okay. also, 
from uh, a couple of weeks ago when I did that, that 30th birthday party, I got tips and I just put them in my pocket. So I don't really use a tip jar. Okay. All right. So my next DJ who actually does a lot at bars as well as weddings and is beyond a great cheddar curtain. We just need <laughs> to pull him back down here. <laughs> and his lovely daughter slash assistant who is behind him. <laughs> uh, what is your idea of uh, tip jars and DJs putting tip jars out? If you're doing it at a wedding, you're out of place, period. They're paying you for everything that should be classy, not tacky, not cheesy. With that, if you feel you should put a tip jar out, you should be charging more for your wedding to start off with to take that necessity away. And don't get me wrong, I knock on wood, I get a lot of tips at my weddings, but it's usually either because we do some of our bookings on the online portal, or you know, all of our bookings are on the online portal, they can do it right there when they're booking me or at the end of the night. A lot of the couples I work for, because we've got a rapport going before I've even shown up and before we've gotten to that day where we've met up, we've talked about everything a few times. I'll walk in and they'll hand me an envelope, sometimes it's cash, sometimes a check, sometimes quick trip gift cards, which are, you know, like gold behind the cheddar curtain. Because every place you look, there's a quick trip. But when it comes to bars, I've never actually wanted to put one out. And if you're going to give me a tip, be it at a wedding or be it a bar, a club, I'm going to slide it under my deck until the end of the night. I don't really care. it With, you know, pubs and clubs, I'm not there to get tipped and knock on wood again that the clubs I'm at pay me very well. So I'm not trying to make tips necessarily. Uh, and the same goes with, you know, requests at weddings. Don't, I, I actually, at weddings, I will tell people not to give me tips at weddings. I don't want your money to play a song or something. You're, the couple you're there for, they're compensating me. You go do your thing and have fun. That's. But a funny tip I've gotten at a wedding, and it was two really good friends that were kind of enemies at the same time. One of them comes up to me, gave me $100 and said, don't play anything he asks you for tonight. And I look at him like, okay, I can do that. I can do that, and I know how to skirt around. But it wound up not having to have come to that because he got the guy who gave me the hundred got so drunk before dinner that the groom's mom grabbed the dude by the ear and walked him out of the venue and said, "Go home." Groom's mom, and I'm like, "Well, yeah." But again, this is Wisconsin. What happens up here doesn't happen everywhere else. These things don't happen at weddings. But yeah, the tip jar. I just think it's maybe. 30, 40 years ago was okay. But in the, especially with the weddings I'm a part of and the clubs and gigs I take outside of weddings, I don't need it out there. There's no place for it for what I'm doing. Yeah, That's don't forget, you, you know, don't forget tip jars is a sign that the DJ is desperate for money. Thank you. Fine. And here, here's a really quick thing for people who are not familiar. Quick trip QT is usually south, like you go to say I can go to St. Louis and see QT. There's another quick trip with a Q okay. that's actually spelled out quick. Yep. I'm sorry, okay. Uh, not with Q, with a K. That quick trip is up north, like Wisconsin, Minnesota, I think Michigan. Iowa. Uh, hey, Iowa, yeah, there's some in northern yeah, Illinois. And so there's there's two uh, quick trips. So you got to make sure, it's is it the QT or is it the K, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the funny thing is that the quick trip up north their drinks are buddy drinks. So I love, I, when I was up there, I saw that I had to grab a cup. I'm like, hey, can I just grab a cup? I'll pay for the cup. I just want the cup because it has my name on it. My name's Buddy. And I gave the manager my card. She looked at it. She's like, just go ahead and grab one. <laughs> she was nice. <laughs> so thank you to Quick Trip up in Wisconsin up there in uh, good old Kenosha. Um, and this is one of the things that, uh, you know, people really, uh, a lot of times walk up to you at an event when you request a song and give money. I've, I've had people do that to myself or if we have one of our employees with us, gives a tip. And, you know, the bride and groom, because I do weddings, it's all that's 99.9% .9 of my business I do is wedding. Usually the bride and groom are the ones to handle a tip. Uh, I do electronic payments. I do it through Square. 
we have it on there for them to tip. If they want to tip, that's up to them. We don't, we don't force people. Um, we do it electronically. But the thing is that I'm not a fan of asking for tips. When people walk up to me and try to give me a tip, a lot of times I say, no, I, no, I don't need it. Like, no, no, here, you're doing a great job. Here, uh, you're going to play my request. And they, you know, hand me five or 10 or 20 bucks. So it's always interesting. But get an interesting take. How can we go down to Texas? Oh, wait, wait. Matt, Matt you want to put it into this one? I don't know if you're yeah, in so, the pain. Okay. So first of all, um, in California, it's a little different. So, well, not different, but yes, we charge enough. Um, I I kind of expect a tip. Like to me, not not a tip jar. I would never put a tip jar out at a wedding. But like at the end of the night, if they had a great time, like it, it's – maybe like 75% of the weddings I do get tipped. Um, and it's not a matter of like how much the wedding is. Cause I just did a wedding that was, you know, a package I charged 2,400 before I charged 1500 cause they booked it so far ago and they gave me a $400 tip. Um, cause I killed, well, I, I don't know. I thought I killed it and they said I killed it. But, uh, to me, it's like a tip. It, it's either a tip or a five-star review. Either way, I'm the kind of person that likes validation. So if somebody comes up to me at the end of the night, like bride or groom, or they they have an envelope made up, that's another thing. A lot of the times they'll give the coordinators a bunch of envelopes to give to the vendors just as like an extra thank you. It's like a hundred bucks or whatever. Uh, that to me is like, it's it's nice. Um, I don't, yeah, like I don't, ex like I'm not going to get mad if they don't tip, but a tip is nice. Um, and when I did DJ bars, I did put out a tip jar and the bar encouraged me because the owner of the bar was the one who decided what the DJs were paying. And it was so low. I mean, it wasn't, it was your average, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And it was so low that the, the bartender's like, yeah, here, here's a pitcher. Here's like five bucks to start it. Like, I hope you get tipped because we can't pay you anymore, regardless of how well the bar does. So in that sense, like, yeah. Um, but otherwise, like, I don't know, like when I, when I do checkouts with credit cards at the end of the night, if that's how they're paying with, with Square, like, 98% of the time they do select tip option, which is great. Um, it just shows that I did a good job and they, they tipped me for it. So I don't know. Maybe I'm yeah, different. That, yeah, yeah, that's the same thing with me. I only get tipped if I'm doing a good job. Plus, like, my tips, like, I always share them with whoever I'm working with. So if, like, we have a photo booth and a lighting guy and we all get tipped, they were all part of the great production. So I like to share those tips. And it helps, you know, them feel like they did a good job and they're getting paid extra. So... Uh, I, I, I send the money my way too. It's it's good to do. Yeah, but, but yeah, that's my that's my way in. Uh, uh, also, when it dries, it looks even better. So I would recommend this stuff. I'll send a link. Is it, on, is it drying the, fast uh, though? Is it drying pretty it quick? It dries super fast. Well, I I have the sun setting right here in my face, so I have the sub uh, pointed at the sun, and I think. Well, there you go. Some UV light right there, burning it on. I'll, I'll make a YouTube video on this next week, probably. Cool. So, Braylon, welcome back to, from your uh, little hiatus. I know uh, life gets in the way of things. I know you got a lot of things going on. I appreciate you coming back tonight on the show. And, uh, again, uh, I know you're going to be checking in time to time when you have time to do so. And uh, great to have you back here. But down in Texas, the great state of Texas, and which is uh, uh, always interesting to hear your take on the uh, tip jar. Tip jar or no tip jar? So, I see tips in two different kind of realms or areas um but first off just overall i'll say no tip jar um i do not provide one i will never put one out myself um i actually have for certain non-wedding gigs that i've done i've had people put out tip jar tip jars for me like on my behalf they were like where's your tip jar you need one blah blah, blah. you're doing so well yada yada and like they will put one out for me um just kind of to be nice. So there's that. Um, but I view tips in like two different ways. So if you're at a wedding, you have the tips that you can get from your couples or, you know, the, the father of the bride, whoever's, you know, paying for the wedding, you have those kinds of tips um, to say like, Hey, thank you so much. Like you exceeded our expectations. And then you also have the simple guest comes up, wants to give you a little money saying, Hey, you're doing a great job or the, Hey, you're doing a great job. Can you play this song? Uh, so I kind of view tips a little differently. Uh, I'm a little bit along those lines of you, buddy, how you said that you don't accept tips sometimes when it comes to like play this song. I never accept a tip unless it's a song that I know I'm going to play. Um, if it's a song that I'm not going to play, 
I got to hear the song title first and know the song to be be able to say, hey, we'll be like, OK, sure. I'll try to fit that in here in just a little bit. Yeah. But if it's a song that I know is going to, you know, ruin the vibe, maybe make the couple upset, anything like that. If I know the song, I'm not going to accept the cash at all, whether it's like five bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks. I don't care. Um, but you're in Texas. Money talks there. It does, but my reputation I, means more to me than I, your measly twenty dollar tip. I'm just gonna be honest. I I had I had a, I have a funny tip story. I had a wedding. The some dad or uncle or whatever, uh, Italian guy, big three piece suit, buttoned down all the way, and nice. he comes in. He's like, "Hey, I want you to move the money dance up to like fifteen minutes from now." And I'm like, "I, I don't know. You know, we got the schedule." Pulls out a fat wad of what must have been ten or twenty thousand dollars, like all hundreds, three four inches thick. And he throws two of them on the table. He's like, how about now? I was like, let me see what I could do. Yeah, <laughs> and then he ended, up, then he, he ended up leaving like 15 minutes later, when right when we were about to do it. Uh, he like dipped out or something. And the mom was like, oh, just keep the money. Don't even do it. Like, don't worry about him. <laughs> that's and I felt kind of bad because I knew like that wad was probably for the newlyweds. And like, that's why he wanted it to, to be sped up. And I don't know, there was no coordinator. So like, technically, I could have done the money dance early. We ended up doing it, you know probably a half hour after that anyway but uh that's that's the kind of thing where it's like what do you do in that situation like right uh, the the other problem is i've had somebody i i dj'd a party once and this lady wanted the cha-cha slide and i had just played it and maybe four songs ago she's like play the cha-cha slide i'm like i just played it i just played it i'll get to it she comes back like three minutes later and now she's like taking a picture of my sticker light on my dj laptop saying and then she she pulls me up on yelp she's like yelp is a really powerful thing huh and I'm like, are you serious, lady? Like, she was literally about to, like, write me a one-star review because I wouldn't play the cha-cha site. Mind you, she's, like, 60-something. And uh, so, it like, it's it's also a, a thing of, like, people people can do crazy stuff these days. And, like, you know, if somebody tries to give you 200 bucks, like, there's a nice polite way to decline. But, like, what if they are drunk and get mad? And, and I don't know. It's, it's a fine line we play, I feel like, sometimes. No, yeah, no, I agree. Um yeah. I haven't I, run into I any situation. I haven't run into a big situation like that. We'll say, but like I said, though, I care way more. Vibe, yeah. I care way. I care way more about my couple who booked right. me, and yeah. what they think of me, as well as any review that they could possibly give. Versus a let's say someone come up came up and just slipped me a one hundred dollar bill to play some song that's just out of pocket in left field that is just gonna kill something that I'm not going to risk that. Like I'm here, I'm hired by a couple. I'm going to like tend to them. I'm going to take care of them. I could care less See, about a hundred dollars. I've seen some of those super, super left field requests looked at it and gone, Oh, hell no. And then I'm like, well, you know, seeing who, and one of them was Barry Manilow's sunrise. I, I am not kidding. It was my banger of the night. I, I, my jaw, I played it, my jaw dropped because there was like 80 people on the dance floor. And then 30 minutes later, the two brothers of the groom got in a fight and the wedding got scrapped. But for those 30... You have tons minutes, of fights in Wisconsin at your wedding. Oh, it's it, hilarious. It's not just at weddings. Every day at one of my gigs last weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, there Not were least. fights. And if it wasn't in the venue, it was like I'm looking out the window watching two guys scrapping. Like, what is going on here? It's St. Patrick's weekend. Just go drink and be stupid. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, well, you know, you know, it's it's always a fun time with uh, alcohol and um, people getting mad. Now, the great thing with Jeff dealing with school dances, especially dealing with you know middle school or grade school or high school and the different dances, he doesn't have to deal with those kind of idiots. So I I, I think I, I think he's got the right, you know, pipeline right there, you know, for his, uh, doing a great job, but also getting, you know, um, not have to worry about uh, sometimes the people who will let alcohol uh, do the talking. You know, See, you know, but there's, yeah, you there's know, some, yeah, it's not just weddings that people get drunk at. It's adult it's rude kids. Parties. We have some, we have some school dances that I do. Some kids are just plain rude. And yeah. it may not be the alcohol, but like some of them are just like if they don't like the song, like there's one school ID a DJ. If they don't like the song, they'll boo you. They'll go new no, next song, next song. You'll get the like, you know, next song. They'll hold up their phone. Like it's that's tough. That's tough. It's, yeah, like see, 
That's exactly uh, why I do not do any teen dances. I'm very if I do an all ages dance, it's the special needs organization here that I'll do dances for, or it's the under ten year old group like my daughters and age and below. But I won't touch a high school dance, a prom, a college sorority. I've done them, but I've learned my lesson. And kids are that rude. It was, God, five years ago, six years ago, I did a dance. I didn't. The company I was working for at the time was like, you have to take it. I'm like, okay, fine. And I, that was like, I'm like, never again. No, I, I can't do this. I'm not a babysitter. And I'm used to dealing with people that are drunk. They do X, Y, and Z things when they're drunk. I they're, know, me too. They're they're predictable. <laughs> but kids, they're not necessarily drunk or could be. And some of the sorority parties I've done, you're not there's no booze here. Well, did you tell the two guys in the parking lot drinking the fifth? And <laughs> things like that. And even with all ages events in Wisconsin, including weddings, if your parents are there and you're under the age of 18 and they say so. Guess what? Your kid can drink with them. So I'm just doing events where there's alcohol. It, it, it kind of levels the playing field of predictability. And that's that's the hard part. So my next question is going to be yes or no question of the night. And it kind of reverts back to the first question in a, in a bit. And again, remember, this is there's no I got you questions. It's a yes, <laughs> no, yes or no. And you know, if you want to give an answer why no or why yes. That's entirely up to you. So, and this kind of goes to, uh, to Matt, where he was talking about people grabbing this, their cell phones, and having their cell phones. And actually, I was at the wedding this past weekend. I went to the uh, the bar to get myself a, a, a pop. And um, the bartender had up there a QR code for tipping. So, with this thought, would you, instead of add, put a tip jar out, would you put out a QR code that someone can scan and send you money electronically instead of having a physical tip jar? So, would a QR code work better than a tip jar? I'm going to say no, because, again, I don't solicit tips. So, let's start with the great state of Texas. Sir, would you do a QR code? Four tips at your next event or wedding. I'm going to keep this short in the actual answer of a QR code specifically for tipping. No, but would I build a QR code that takes you to like a link tree kind of account that you can do like song requests, like social media, blah, blah, blah. Tip option. Would I do that? Possibly. That's a very, that's a possibly, but would I do a specific QR code in place of a tip jar? Absolutely not. Interesting. Have a little tree there and have choices. You know? Yeah, you can have like little, like, because I mean, I mean, I'm assuming people maybe know what Linktree is or like, you know, the quote unquote, like link in bio kind of deal where you can list your social medias, any YouTube content, uh, direct link to your website. Like you have like multiple different things. You could possibly do like a link to like a Venmo. You could do that if you want to like get smart with technology. I don't know, but if, we'll see. You could. You could do that. So, Jeff, what about you, sir? Um, no, not for tipping. Um, but I do create QR codes. This is one I'm getting ready to cut out this weekend um, for music requests. So, yeah, they're good for that. Uh, basically, that just... You scan that, then it just takes you right to my uh, uh, message. You can message me a song request. And, you know, that started with COVID. And, you know, I still use it, uh, you know, to this day, you know, when, uh, you know, especially with kids, um, you know, to, for them to do song requests because, you know, they've got phones in their hands the entire night, even while they're dancing. Uh, but for a, a, a tip, no, I, I still, I, I, you know, I'm getting I'm getting paid, so I think that's for me that's that's enough. Okay, Hunter, what about you? Would you do a, a QR code for tips, or would you do kind of like Braylon for uh, for a tip tr uh, for a tree that does tipping and social media and reviews, or would you do like Jeff that has for requests? 
Uh, I would say absolutely not because I'm not that tech savvy. I don't even know how to make a QR code, so I've never really had to do that before. So, yeah, the answer is no. But I would like to make a QR code for, like, song requests, but I would like to do that, but I don't even know how. And usually, that there, through, usually through a service. What, what service are you using, Jeff, for your uh, song request? Request now or? Uh, I, what, to create the QR code? No, no, I'm yeah. talking about the, what service are you using to... For request, for the song request that just goes straight to my phone. It okay. goes straight to my message messages. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, and, and the reason why I, I, I do it for some and not all, you know, I got a request to do it for the prom this weekend coming up, and they were they were like uh, the guy last year did uh, did AirDrop, and I'm like that's great if you got an iPhone, uh, but if you don't have an iPhone, you're kind of left out. So I'm like, why don't I just do a QR code? I've done it before, and they're like, yeah, that'd be great. Now, the problem is this thing's going to go absolutely berserk, you know, with 500 kids, you know, about and half of them are probably. That's what I was going to ask, though. I was going to ask, Jeff, do you do a QR code in the moment during the dance or do you provide like a QR code with a link? Like you have the, administ the school administration like approve it and you give it to the kids like two weeks prior to the event. So you can like kind of plan because. I've had you know, trouble um, in the past with the day yeah. of because the songs they want are usually not clean and yeah. oh absolutely tough. yeah no it's uh, basically I'm gonna cut these guys out and put them on tables at the event uh, so I've got some you know four buys and some two buys um, so you know just stuff like that I'll cut these out and I'll place them on tables now am I gonna get legitimate requests yeah a few. Or am I going to play them? Maybe a couple. Right. Uh, probably my guess is 75% I will not touch. You know, I'll right. look at well, it. Yeah, especially like, requests like, you know, Cardi B up and, you know, some of the songs that are out there, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's, I mean, if I've got it and if I don't have to go searching for it and I feel it's legit, you know, for the for the dance, I'll play it, you know. But I'm not going to go digging for something. And, but you know, it gives the kids – a sense of hey, I'm helping. You know, I'm I'm helping to to plan this evening, to plan the music for tonight. They like it. They like that that uh, that feeling. So, you know, it, even if they don't hear their song, I mean, yeah, it's it, they'll if they don't if they don't hear their song, they at least see the QR code and think, oh, well, he's playing other people's songs. Blah blah blah. I mean, yeah, it's kind of that look. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it does take the uh, take the pressure off of them coming up to the stand and um, you know interfering and you know you can't hear them. They're screaming and they're they're like you know that song that goes but um but um you know I'm like you know you get that they don't know the name of it and I'm like yeah I can't my favorite my my all time favorite is can you play Apple Bottom Jeans and I'm like low <laughs> all the time low oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna rename that song Apple Bottom Jeans because nobody calls it they low. need to yeah, they don't call it low it's so funny <laughs> it, it's you know yeah I know Hunter is wearing a uh, Blockbuster Video T shirt and as I, I told you guys before back in uh, turn of the century. So in 98, 99, 2000, I worked in Blockbuster Video and Management. And um, I can tell you many times being in the store, many times in my store, people would come in, go, do you have that movie with that guy who was with the other guy? And they, they, they had a big shootout and they did this and they jumped on a plane and they took off. And then the planes, they started shooting from the planes and... Something like that, just just very vague parts of a movie, and it's like you have to play detective with them. Well, okay, what the main guy was he ball headed? Was he had short hair? Do he have dark hair, lighter? And you start going through stuff to try and figure That's out what funny. the actors are in the movie, and then hmm. you start whittling it down. It's kind of the same thing I learned as a DJ. It's the same thing, and you know, people give you song lyrics. I get with brides and grooms uh, quite a bit. I'll get, a song, I'll get a song uh because I I use Vibo for uh for my music um to get to the uh the brides and grooms for them to select the songs, especially the special songs like you know, you'd be a, whatever first dance, daddy daughter, ceremony stuff. And a lot of times they give me lyrics of a song. So I'm sitting here Googling what they gave me, and the artist could be misspelled, the artist could be the wrong artist, it could be um, you know, it, it could be the lyrics, it could be a lot of things. So it's, 
it, it's a mystery. And I'm sure that you guys all see, especially Jeff, uh, dealing with school kids. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they may send you links to things like links to Spotify. And it's like, here's a hot link for, to Spotify to a song. Hey, that's great. But that gives me no information. I, I, I need to bypass that. Yeah, yeah, and and a lot of times it's um, you know it, it's it, some of the requests from uh, middle school and high school kids just they're they're crazy. It's tough, um, and, it's and tough. they'll request anything from uh, from some rapper that is uh, you know up and coming out of Miami who doesn't even have a record yet. But but you know what? He's got a video on YouTube, you know, or uh, it's he released one song on SoundCloud. Yeah, 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 one song on SoundCloud. And yeah, can you play that? Well, I don't think so. Yeah, and speaking of song requests, you can actually send song requests through virtual DJs called Ask the DJ. It's been like it's been there for a while and it really makes it easy for people. You can just send a link to your virtual DJ and they can message you or send in a song request and you can easily look it up on virtual dj yep and i think i if they, i think you can do a qr code to that link which would Here's make it much easier and you you can go to google and google qr code make it in google a qr code it's, it takes 10 seconds to do so it's Here's, not hard to do what, the only Here's problem with that is is uh that your computer has to be hooked to the internet yeah, yeah. oh yeah I, I keep mine yeah, I off the internet, internet every whenever i'm djing so that's yeah, I like to do the old school way, the uh, pencil, pen, paper, <laughs> uh, notebook, the old school way. I'm, I'm always, I'm always, I always connect mine to the internet. I look, what I bought, look what I bought at Walmart today. Two new vinyl records. There you I go. Master of Puppets and the first Stranger Things think? soundtrack on vinyl. So, Matt, this is, uh, you, you, I know you've been uh, running around painting uh, the walls and painting. Uh, turn for my story. Go ahead, go. I have, a, I have a story for you guys. Hold on, let me let me put the lock on this. So, uh, my couple... Hold on. Let me mute this real quick while I lock this stupid thing. All right, so, um, my couple on Friday, uh, they booked a pretty basic package, just, you know, uplighting some lights, and then they added the white package, so, you know, it looked nice. So, uh, they had asked about... A fog machine they're like oh do you have a fog machine do you have like a low-lying fog machine and i was like well certainly we have you know a regular fog machine we can throw that in no charge you know i don't really care it's a fog machine um the venue didn't allow them anyway so i was like whatever but i was like yeah we do the we do the dancing on a cloud where it's for your first dance and then she's like oh well how long does the effect last can you make it go all night i'm like no it's really more of like a one-time thing you have dry ice you drop it in there it's a boiling bucket once it goes it goes there's no real turning back She's like, is there any way you can, like, add extra to make it go for, like, the father-daughter and the mother-son? I'm like, in theory, sure. Uh, I just can't guarantee it's going to last. The water's going to stay that hot for five, six, seven minutes. So either way, if she's like, okay, well, for the first dance, how much would it be? And so I gave her a price of, like, 300 bucks, whatever. Um, fair price, right? So uh, she says, oh, we'll, we'll think about it. We'll get back to you three, four days later. No, we're good. No, thank you. So I show up at the venue. And the uh, first person I talked to is the coordinator. And she says, oh, the couple wanted me to tell you, they, they went and got the, uh, the dancing on a cloud, the fog machine thing. It's a, it's a Nimbus. And uh, they, want, they want to use that for the first dance. And honestly, I have no idea how to use it. So they wanted me to ask if you could do it. And I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, she's like, yeah, they, they rented it from some company or something. And uh, I've got the dry ice in the freezer. And I'm like, what? Like, like total slap in the face. Like, oh, hey, we, we didn't want to pay for the full service from you, but we went and rented the machine for 115 bucks and had our coordinator buy some dry ice. Can you run it and launch it for us and fill it up with water and make sure it's heated up? Nope. I'm like, Not are my you responsibility. kidding? No chance. And, and, and I told the coordinator, I'm like, hey, that's really, you know, I, I, I don't want to take responsibility if it doesn't go off perfectly. She's like, I, you know, whatever whatever money you want, like, I'll pay you for it. And uh, I, I didn't want to be like a dick or anything, but basically, you know, she, so, you know, during cocktail hour or whatever, she brought out the machine. It's a Nimbus, of course. Uh, of course, I had to fill it with water. Luckily, somebody in the back had a five gallon bucket because she didn't have the cart with it. Even though there was a hose spigot outside, I can't fill it up with a hose and then lift it by myself when it's full of however many gallons of water and the hundred pounds that it weighs. 
And, uh, but yeah, she had the dry ice and broke it up. And, and that's the thing is like, I told her, like, I need to be able to press play for the first dance. So if you want me to do this, like either I'll tell you how to do it or you go and press play. And, uh, so I showed her like press play here and she pressed play on the wrong song. Uh, she pressed, she pressed the, the forward, she pressed next instead of play on Spotify. So, you know, instead of their first dance song, it was like some dance she was going to surprise everybody to. So, you know, the bride was like, oh, no, no, no. And uh, so luckily, like, I wasn't at the DJ booth, so everybody thought it was her mistake, which it was. And so we went, and luckily I hadn't dropped the ice yet. But after that, uh, came back, ice, first dance went great. Um, and that's that. And, and oh, here's the better part. So uh, she, at the end of the night, you know, I'm cleaning it up. I, I tell her, hey, here's the machine. You got to empty the water. Um, she forgot to take one of the, the it had a power con cable so it heats up faster she forgot to take the power con cable so i get a call on sunday i think she's like hey uh, it's the coordinator i'm here with the bride did you happen to pick up a power cable or did you see where the power cable went uh i'm, I'm here returning the machine and, and they're asking about it and i'm like oh yeah I, I think i remember seeing it i put it in with my stuff just in case and she's like is there any way you could drop it off and this place is in la an hour from my house and i'm like seriously and uh, I'm like, I'll drop it in the mail. And uh, yeah, I, so that was, that was that. But talk about going like that. That's just like, that's, I, I talked to one of the event people that was like working there, one of the employees, cause she had asked about the machine and she's like, well, that's a real slap in the face, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. And what, what are they saving? 150 bucks. And like, what if, what if I refuse to do it and you don't get that first dance? Like, who's it going to look bad on me? Because, oh, well we asked the DJ to do it. And like, yeah, that's my story. That's tough. That's tough. Well, not to sound bad. Your co your coordinator has not dealt with dry ice before because dry ice doesn't need to be in a freezer. It's not going to lessen. No. It. it's a compressed gas. What's crazy is the effect actually looked a lot better than when I keep it in my cooler. <laughs> so maybe that is the secret. Um, I don't, I have a, a a Yeti cooler that I keep it in. Um, but I pick up the dry ice up. Yeah, like around the time she got there, like 12 to 1, and the first dance is around 5, 5.30. But uh, maybe it was just because it was like, it was kind of hot in there and they didn't really have the air full blasts. But that effect, maybe I'm just, I've gotten so good at using it now. But uh, it, it had a nice milky cloud. I was pretty impressed. I was like, damn, that looked good. Um, no, and, you know, they, she did say thank you at the end of the night. She's like, oh, thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate you doing that. And she was nice about it, but the wedding sucked anyway. Like, it was... It was a all African American crowd, and I played like good music and had them out there, but they weren't really like a big dancey crowd. A lot of them were sitting down, and there was maybe like thirty minutes where there was just like nobody on the dance floor. They were all just taking pictures and using a, a floral backdrop, and uh, but I don't know, it was yeah, yeah, that's that's like, just, yeah, yeah, that actually sounds like thing, just yeah, because you're not actually, dancing doesn't mean yeah, you're that, not success. Yeah, that actually right. sounds like my last wedding where it's not a dancing crowd. They're just socializing, dancing, or hanging out, no dancing, just dancing. I get that. Yeah, I get that same thing. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah, I, I get the same thing. And, you know, Hunter, you're right. And you get those crowds like that, that they just, you know, they want to talk and socialize. You know, they want to dance. And that's that's the thing. Is that, you know, you did your best. You, you did the dance on the cloud. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. So I call, I call that a throwaway wedding. It's definitely not one I'm asking for a review for, and not one that I cared to make a gig log out of or remember too well. So no, that's a wedding. That my last wedding, I just DJ for free because it was it was a wedding gift to my cousin. So I wasn't going to for family. Her. Yeah, I can see that. So yeah, here, here's my next question. This is going to be the last question of the night for everyone. Um, I, I sent you guys a, a video from. Um, about how one person uh, thinks uh, how DJs can get gigs. And uh, um, again, it's their take on it and so forth, so on. And I want to ask you guys, what is your two minute take a, a DJ out there starting out, or even a DJ has been out there for a while, how can they either A, start getting gigs or how can they improve getting gigs? Uh, either way you can look at it. Um, and, you know, having that presence on social media, I feel, is important. I feel having, uh, the, you know, presence on uh, one or two platforms that you could actually have reviews put on. You know, for me, for being a wedding DJ, it's the not. 
you know, wedding wire is also big, you, you know, Yelp, whatever you feel it's best for your business, uh, having a place to put reviews. It could be Facebook. It could be Google. It could be, you know, just someone sends you a letter, a card. that says, hey, you know, hey, Hunter, you did a great job at the, my wedding or at my party. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's a review. And that's something you could take a picture of and put it up on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, whatever you want to put it on. Uh, speaking of, yeah, speaking of reviews, I actually got one two days ago. This is from someone who was actually at Sam's Corner and says, you are amazing. So looking forward to the summer. They actually put me that day for a party on July 3rd. There you go, man. And now they're a friend now. You got a party and a new friend. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it, that's the way it go, bro. So, Hunter, I guess I was you. What is a tip you can give to a new DJ starting out that could help them get gigs? Well, basically, just start out with gigs. That, you know, you can host your own parties or ask family or friends if they need a DJ for their events, saying, hey, I'm a new DJ, trying to get my foot into the door. If you need a DJ for your events, just let me know. I'll be happy to DJ for you guys. Mostly for like family. You can start with family and then expand over the years just to get some experience. And that's what I started out with like five years ago, 20 years ago was mostly DJing for family. Now I'm branching out to my church and other like family and friends. And that that's that that's a good that's a good idea. And that's how you get some gigs. And business cards. You can go on Vista Print or anywhere to make business cards, hand them out to people, say, hey, I'm a DJ doing, I uh, specialize in weddings, parties, school, church, or whatever. Whatever you specialize in, just hand them a business card. And, they'll... and that's, that's you know, marketing is an important thing. Big uh, business card is a marketing tool, and it is marketing. And I know you have a polo for, that you wear for your business for certain yeah. events. You know, yeah. like your, your, your business event you just did for, at the hot dog restaurant. Uh, you were a business your business polo, right? Um, I you probably did. Exactly wore your polo. I wore, yeah, I just wore a t shirt and shorts. Oh, okay. Was, I thought you wore your polo, but still, no, that was the, I, that was, yeah, that was the birthday party. The birthday, okay, but still, that's marketing. That's all marketing, and you know that's one of the things really marketing. Word of mouth. Yeah, and marketing to your friends and family when you're first starting out. I think it's, it's a good it's a good idea, and then you branch out from there. So, Jeff, yeah. I, I know you do a lot of schools. You said you do a lot of special events. You do weddings here and there. If, if someone is you know either starting out or someone's been around for a while, is having driving out a dry spell a little bit, uh, maybe getting into gigs or stuff like that, what would you feel that would be a nice tip to give someone that you could say, "Hey, have you tried this? Tried that?" Well, uh, for me, it was. Um... DJing at the pool party in my neighborhood about 20 years ago, you know, and that got me back into it. I had a, you know, just my minimal gear. Um, and, you know, there were some uh, moms, some dads that noticed, uh, hey, you know, he's got some nice stuff. That's, you know, it's better than just what's sitting, you know, in my house. So they're like, yeah, and, I, and I'm like, yeah, I can DJ. And it started kind of that way. So, I mean, basically I would tell them, you know, use every advantage, every connection that you have. If you have a neighborhood pool, find out if they have pool parties. Uh, you can, you know, DJ at during the summer to get some experience. Maybe you can't charge much or whatever, you know, st things like that, um, that people are looking for. You know, I was just um, approached the other day. Somebody asked me if I could do an event for free. And I'm like, no, I don't really, uh, I'm not going to drag my gear out there and do it for free. But if you, know, if you ask around, you can probably find some uh, young DJs that will do it for free looking for exposure. So that's the thing. And this was an event for a, um, um, it was like a 10K run for some charity uh, in the area. And so stuff like that, you know, it, is, it, it's prime examples of, um, you know, how, how DJs can get started with very little or no experience. And that, and that's key because, you know, it's the, it's the old uh, catch 22. You can't get a job without experience and you can't get experience without the job. So it's, um, what do you do? And I've had, I've had a couple of kids in the neighborhood ask me that were interested in it. You know, how do I get started? And I'm like, 
just got to do it. You just, just got to put yourself out there and uh, do what, do the best you can. So, yeah, that's, that's about all I can offer. I mean, yeah, I, I like that, you know, social media these days, especially, um, you know, you've got to have a social media presence, you know, either YouTube, uh, if you can make a video, even with a, you know, an iPhone these days, you can make a pretty good video, you know, and almost edit itself. Uh, you know, AI is getting there where, you know, stuff can almost be edited instantaneously. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, just, um, you know, it's, it's like the, uh, you know, even if you don't have experience, you can make yourself look like you've got some incredible experience uh, just with some good editing and good uh, social media experience and photos. Um, just like the, the Pope picture that came out uh, yesterday or today, this week with the uh, puffer jacket. <laughs> I don't know if anybody see it was on the news tonight. It was AI generated. And um, but yeah, it just shows, you know. Yeah, you know, I saw that. That was you funny. Can do anything. So, yeah, that, that's about all I can offer for that. So, Matt, what about you? What, what would you give as a way to get gigs for someone uh, coming up or someone who's having a little trouble? I mean, you definitely got to have uh, social media. You got to have somewhere where people could see your work. But, like, as starting out, I mean, when I started out, I got gigs because, you know, I started DJing. I learned from this other DJ. And he moved away to Oregon and all these com like organizations that were hitting him up. He's like, oh, I, I don't live here anymore, but here's my friend. He's great. So I just got lucky with that. Those gigs led to more, which led to more. I DJ my friend's wedding, started a website. But like in the wedding business, like I started from pretty much scratch. I mean, I had a friend that was getting married. He asked me to DJ a wedding. I'd never DJ a wedding. I did it. Went well. I made a website. I made a wedding wire listing and just took off from there um wedding wire is dead now here but uh the knot is still powerful um speaking of which i think i got an inquiry i need to respond to um but yeah i mean really what like in today's day and age you really gotta start by like joining a multi-op i think um that's really seems like a good way to go to at least get some practice under your belt shadowing other djs maybe going out on your own and then you know, stick with them for a year or two. And then once you feel comfortable enough and whatnot, then branch out on your own. I mean, there's some guys that, that DJ at the place I do in San Clemente that I did on my last gig log that are fresh DJs. And so what they'll do is they'll stick them with me or they'll stick them with a veteran and uh, they'll give them five, six shows to shadow on. They'll pay them a couple hundred bucks and then they'll, let them loose uh, on an easier going couple. So you have that level of control when you're a multi-op and, and you're a beginner DJ where like they can control hey, their super easy couple music selection is easy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my advice. I, I also say like, don't spend too much money on ads or, you know, drop a $4,000 on a yearly wedding wire pro listing. Um, like my friend Carlos did. Uh, but to, to each to each their own. I don't know. It's it's uh there's there's so much competition and they got to do stand out. Okay. And Braylon, what about you? What would you say to someone for how do you get some gigs and some tips? As a beginner, I definitely think if you can have the opportunity to um you know have people that you know that it entrust you with their wedding with their events things like that take it that turns into word of mouth um and then from word of mouth if you get you know into certain venues and things like that where they like you um and they're like hey you did a fantastic job any venue that gives you any attention take that as an opportunity build that relationship with them so that way you can possibly be on like a preferred vendors list I have a few vendors, sorry, a few venues here in the area that I'm on their preferred vendors list. And I have gotten so much, you know, business just from that, like couples reaching out saying, hey, uh, we're having our wedding at venue X and they recommended you like that's given me a lot of help. Um, as a simple thing you can do, social media is free. Have some kind of social media for your business so like instagram facebook those are the basic ones like do something like that just have that as a platform um but something that i really saw a big jump 
once I created it, that helped me with my business was finally creating a website. Once I created that website, even if it's just a landing page for people to see, in my opinion, they see website, they think it's official. So it's not just, you know, Joe Schmo having an like having an Instagram account or whatever. It's if you have a website, I really think it just adds to your professionalism. It's a look. It doesn't have to be even like super nice, a lot of money into it. It's really just a landing page. Um, do it. I highly recommend it. But other than that, I mean, as starting out, those are the best ideas I can give. Um, and then as your business grows and you scale, of course, you can do a bunch of different things, but that's up to what you want to do. But that's, that's what I would recommend for someone starting out is word of mouth first, having social media. That's part of it. That's basically free getting with venues. If you're like a wedding kind of guy, so getting with the uh, venues, getting on preferred lists, and then that website will definitely help your visibility and like your kind of professionalism. And finally, Brentley, what what would you give? And I know you have, I, I know everyone here does a lot of social media. And if you catch uh, Brentley stuff, sometimes I catch it on your Facebook, and Instagram, uh, on all his social medias. And um, the funny part is a lot of times he posts pictures of, because he does stickers, because he does also bars, and they were the stickers were at all over uh, the area. And uh, I don't know if you've gotten fined or not from the, uh, the city of... Uh, uh up there or we're not going to talk about that <laughs> if you're getting a little knocks at the door with the, the police say hey no 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 more stickers but i know you you you're very prevalent with the stickers giving the stickers yeah. out what 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 is your uh I, I, for your area how, how you would get you know talk to someone either starting out new to for um getting gigs or someone who's been in the business for a while and is kind of dry not able to get gigs right now what do you say would be some of the things to do See, the way I marketed the whole DJ Brentley thing, it wasn't just that I'm a wedding DJ or I'm just a club DJ. But I marketed it so when I first started out on my own that I could do just about any gig you threw at me. Have I refined that down? Yes. So when I was starting out, what I would say to people that are, definitely be open to taking whatever gigs you can get your hands on, be it. And I still, actually, this uh, one thing that I donate my time to is a special needs organization here in La Crosse. And I've been donating my time for them since 2017 or 2018. And in return, it's gotten me some leads, but moreover than not, it's helped get my name out to a large mass of people without me having to do the front end advertising on it. Because they get enough news coverage, my name is now there. Uh... I was lucky enough my first year out on my own and since to get nominated in the best lacrosse running and finished in the winner's circle, what now, six out of the last seven years of it or five out of the last six years, something like that. So every chance I've had to get my name in front of somebody's face, and this includes my stickers, I'm taking that advantage or taking gigs that some of you guys might call me crazy for taking, but there's a certain status to taking the gig because I know I'm going to, I do the car shows for next to nothing in, uh, here in La Crosse uh, one Tuesday a month at the drive-in. I honestly, it wasn't me even trying to, I just wanted to do the gig and I was willing to do it for free, but they're like, here, take some money. I'm like, okay. But it's putting me in front of anywhere from 200 to 1,000 people on a Tuesday night in the middle of the week. That low-paying gig has a lot of return on it. Every one of the gigs that I've positioned myself in, if it's not paying me on the front end, it has a secondary reason to it. So I can, it, like I said, the Rudy's gig doesn't pay me much, but it pays dividends in the promo, getting my name in front of people. And that's the one beginning thing or things that beginners need to do, along with everything else everybody's mentioned, having rock solid social media, having your website, making sure your equipment can at least live up to what you are offering. And like we've all talked about, there's a place for everyone, the $500 DJ and the $5,000 DJ. Finding where you need to be and working within that. Taking all those factors in consideration and getting your name out there as much as possible is the biggest thing I can tell anybody. And because I do college clubs, my stickers, I mean, yes, I go through $10,000 a semester. It costs me right around $500, $700 bucks 
so not too much, but advertising cost, they are on every college kid's, you know, refrigerator on their chest. They're going home with them. So they wind up in houses and in return for that, when they get married or, you know, after graduation, give them two more years, they're hitting me up for their wedding. Night. So it may not be an immediate burn sell kind of thing. It might be that, but every aspect of it is you know, so down the road. That's yeah. And that's the important stuff is to do things. Wow. We, we were been through an hour already guys. <laughs> this is, uh, this is, you know, like, this is, this is the great thing about the show. We, we go through the topic so quickly. Um, and again, if, you, if you're watching right now on, on YouTube, make sure you hit, hit the like button. Make sure you, you know, give a comment, ask a question. We want to hear what you guys think. Uh, make sure that if you get, you're not following us on Twitch, make sure you go over on Tuesday nights and follow on Twitch and there'll be links. Everyone's here, YouTube channel down below. So go to your YouTube channels, subscribe to your YouTube channels. You have not done so already and follow everyone here. Cause you get a lot of great information and a lot of great DJs here. You have a DJ here who, you know, like myself, does all weddings. You have different parts of the country, Midwest, the South. The, you know, Texas, California, East Coast, West Coast. I, I, I we're, we're trying to have DJs from everywhere. And uh, again, I know cool thing. And uh, Jeff, you know, uh, both you and Hunter are East Coast DJs. Even when you're in the South, you're still East Coast DJs. So we well, have both coasts represented here, and we got some great DJs here. So please make sure you follow them, uh, follow their journeys, um, and ask them questions. And also follow me on TikTok. So I do have a DJ TikTok at DJ Cool Thing. There I you do. Go. I do gig recaps. I do DJ updates. I do all that kind of stuff on TikTok. And also, a lot of us go live on YouTube, so always check us out on YouTube for the live stuff too. All right, guys. So again, I want to appreciate you guys for coming in tonight, and watching the show. You guys be safe out there. Peace.